Human scabies is an intensely pruritic skin infestation caused by the host-specific mite, Sarcoptes scabiae hominis. Scabies is a global public health problem affecting persons of all ages, races, and socioeconomic groups. The disease remains common primarily because of diagnostic difficulty, inadequate treatment of patients and their contacts, and improper environmental control measures. Prevalence of scabies is higher in children and sexually active individuals than in other persons. Transmission of scabies primarily occurs through direct skin-to-skin -skin contact, and for this reason, it is commonly seen among sexually active individuals. Less frequently, the disease can spread by indirect contact through formites, such as infested bedding or clothing. A person infested with mites can spread the disease, even if he or she is asymptomatic. And there may be a prolonged period between the primary infection and symptom onset. Now let's discuss about the life cycle of the mite and pathogenesis of the disease. Human scabies mite is an obligate parasite that completes its entire life cycle on humans and only the female mite infects the human. It is large enough to be seen with the naked eye. The mite has four pairs of legs, and it crawls at a rate of 2.5 centimeters per minute. It is unable to fly or jump. The mite does not penetrate deeper than the superficial layer of the epidermis, the stratum corneum. It is able to survive on bedding, clothes, or other surfaces at room temperature for about two to three days. At temperatures below 20 degrees Celsius, the mite is unable to move. However, it can survive such temperatures for extended periods. Other variants of scabies mite can cause infestation in other mammals, such as dogs, cats, pigs, and horses. These variants can cause irritation in human skin as well. However, they are unable to reproduce in human. So, they cause only a transient dermatitis. This image shows the complete life cycle of the scabies mite. The female mite lays eggs inside the burrow she made within the stratum corneum, as you can see in this picture. Then the eggs hatch within two to three days to form larvae, which have three pairs of legs. Then the larvae mature into nymphs, which have four pairs of legs. Finally, the larger nymphs become adults. Mating takes place only once, and the female is fertile for the rest of her life. Mature female makes a serpentine burrow in the stratum corneum, using proteolytic enzymes, in order to lay eggs to start a new cycle. There are two main types of scabies, classic scabies, and crusted scabies. Classic scabies is the predominant type, and typically 10 to 15 mites live in the host. There is little evidence of infection exists during the first month. However, after four weeks, and with subsequent infections, a delayed type hypersensitivity reaction occurs against mites, eggs, larvae, and feces. With reinfestation, the sensitized individual may develop a rapid reaction. The resultant skin eruption and associated intense pruritus are the hallmarks of classic scabies. Crusted scabies is a distinctive and highly contagious form of the disease. In this variant, hundreds to millions of mites infest the host individual, who is usually immunocompromised, elderly, or physically or mentally impaired. Risk factors for scabies include young age, presence of many children in the household, poor housing, sharing clothes and towels, and irregular use of showers. Now let's discuss about the clinical presentation of scabies. Patients complain of intense pruritus that is worse at night. Lesions are distributed predominantly in the following areas in adults. Flexor aspects of the wrists. Interdigital web spaces of the hands. Axillary. Elbows. Waist. Buttocks. And genitalia. Pruritic papules and vesicles on the scrotum and penis in men and areoli in women are highly characteristic. Infants and young children may develop lesions diffusely but unlike in adults, lesions are common on the face, scalp, neck, palms, and soles. In immunocompromised individuals, all cutaneous sites are susceptible for lesions. Physical examination findings include primary and secondary lesions. Primary lesions are the first manifestations of the infestation and typically include small papules, vesicles, and burrows. Burrows are a pathognomonic sign 
that represents the intraepidermal tunnel created by the moving female mite. They appear as serpiginous, thread-like elevations in the superficial epidermis, ranging from 2 to 10 millimeters in length. These may not be readily apparent and must be actively sought. A black dot may be seen at one end of the burrow, indicating the presence of a mite. High yield locations for burrows include the following. Web spaces of the fingers. Flexor surfaces of the wrists. Elbows. Axillae. Belt line. Feet. Scrotum in men. And areoli in women. Erythematous papules and vesicles are also seen in typical distributions in adults. They range from 1 to 3 millimeters in size. The vesicles are discrete lesions with clear fluid. Papules rarely contain mites and most likely represent the hypersensitivity reaction. They are commonly seen on the shaft of the penis in men and areoli in women. Scabies nodules occur in about 7 to 10 percent cases, particularly in young children. Mites are rarely found within these nodules. Crusted scabies manifests with marked thickening and crusting of the skin. The lesions are often hyperkeratotic and cover larger skin areas. Marked scaling is common. Pruritus may be minimal or absent. Nail dystrophy and scalp lesions may also be present. Secondary scabies lesions result from scratching, secondary infection, and host immune response against mites and their products. Characteristic findings include the following. Excoriations. Post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Erythroderma and widespread eczema. And honey-colored crusting. Diagnosis of scabies can often be made clinically in patients with a pruritic rash and characteristic linear burrows. And the diagnosis is confirmed by light microscopic identification of mites, larvae, and ova in skin scrapings. In rare cases, mites are identified in biopsy specimens obtained to rule out other dermatoses. Clinically inapparent infection can be detected by amplification of Sarcoptes DNA by polymerase chain reaction. In addition, elevated IgE titers and eosinophilia can also be seen. Treatment of scabies include administration of scabicidal agents such as permethrin, lindane, and ivermectin. In addition, appropriate antimicrobial agents may be required if a secondary infection has developed. Itching may persist up to one month even following successful treatment. This may be partially alleviated with an oral antihistamine such as hydroxazine hydrochloride. In case of nodular scabies, intranodular injection of dilute corticosteroids may be needed. Patients with crusted scabies should be advised to remove excess scale to allow better penetration of the topical agents and to decrease the burden of infestation. This can be achieved with warm water soaks, followed by application of a keratolytic agent, such as 5% salicylic acid and petrolatum. Because of the heavy mite burden, patients with crusted scabies may require repeated application of topical agents with simultaneous use of oral agents. As far as the prevention is concerned, all household members and close personal contacts older than two months and not pregnant should be treated for scabies, even if they are asymptomatic. Advise them to launder clothing, bed linens, and towels in hot water and machine dry them. Items that cannot be washed may be dry cleaned or sealed in plastic bags. And all carpets and furniture should be vacuumed, and the vacuum bags should be immediately discarded.